الدكتوره هناء دكتوره بسمة حماد هي زميله عزيزه ليا هي دفعتي من هي ليكشر اوف كارديو فاسكولار ميديسن الكسندريا يونيفرستي شي از كارنت سينيور سي ام ار فيلو ات رويال برومبتون هوسبيتال ان لندن Uh, and she is a non-invasive uh, cardiologist with sub-speciality training in adult congenital heart disease uh, and multimodal cardiac imaging. Um, uh, she uh, had her training uh, uh, in um, um, USA and Royal Brompton uh, Hospital London, uh, uh, UK. Inshallah, uh, she will explain to us today cardiac MRI views. Anatomy and systemic reading, and so on, be simple and concise. We have fed, and so on, all day long, by the Lord. Good morning. My name is Basma Hamed. I'm working as a lead CMR fellow at Royal Brompton Hospital in London, and I'm currently also a lecturer of cardiology at Alexandria University. I'm pleased that I will speak about the CMR views and anatomy and systemic reading in this brilliant workshop. So why it's important to understand anatomy and do a proper systemic reading? Because in CMR, the data acquisition is based on understanding the anatomy and the questions that need to be answered. And if you missed it, you missed it. There is no second chance to uh, acquire more images or to post uh, processing of the imaging uh, and to get um, a, a different uh, perspective or a specific anatomical uh, position. Uh, so systemic reading is important so as not to miss cardiac or extracardiac findings. So initially what we are doing is making sure that the heart is in the center of acquisition by doing what's called localizers. We localize the heart in three planes, in the transaxial plane and in, in the sagittal localizer and in the middle and in the coronal localizer. And then we get a trans um, axial, trans sagittal, and trans coronal stack of um, dispositions. And this stack is important in the planning of the uh, anatomical views or the RV, LV, aortic, or pulmonary valve. And also important for looking for um, other extracardiac findings or um, a point, an anatomical point of interest that we would like to plan further. So let's start with left, left ventricle views. So the aim of planning is to get um, what's called a ventricular long axis view, which is uh, equivalent to the two chamber view of the echo. And we define our short axis, which is similar to the short axis of the echo and horizontal long axis, which is uh, equivalent to the four chamber view. So from the initial transaxial stack, as you can see in the top uh, left image, uh, we can see the, the full chamber is um, foreshortened, but from this um, position, by bisecting the mitral valve and apex, we will get the vent, uh, vertical long axis, which is equivalent to the two chamber view, as in the top right image. And then when we do a cross section of um, full chamber, the foreshortened full chamber that we had in the transaxial stack, and uh, cross section of the ventricular long axis, we will have the short axis view as in the second image on the right. Then, by doing um, a plane bisecting the mitral valve into the apex from the vertical long axis, and uh, a plane bisecting the short axis that we got, we will have the four chamber view, the nice one, not for short, then, which is equivalent to the four chamber view. And then if we would like to have a more proper two chamber view or vertical long axis, we can plan it from the uh, short axis uh, image in the top, uh, in the bottom left, by setting it vertically, and we will have uh, the full chamber and two chamber view. So this planning is important. We will have an equivalent two chamber, full chamber view and short axis. Uh, the data that we can have from this is the regional wall motion abnormality in a left ventricle uh, wall and also um, AV valve, anatomy, tricuspid and mitral valve, size of the atria, and also the wall thickening. 
from the horizontal long axis, which is equivalent to the four chamber, and the vertical long axis, which is equivalent to the two chamber, when we do um, a stack of images, uh, as you can see in the bottom images, uh, 12 stack, uh, cross-sectionally cutting the four chamber and two chamber, we will get an, what's called a semi short axis stack, and this is important for function and volume, and you, you will have another lecture discussing it um, specifically how uh, to calculate the ventricular function and volume from this semi uh, short axis stack. So basic, basically, it's equivalent to how we do the Simpson in the echo from the four chamber and two chamber in uh, echo, which is my plane method you will uh, have a volume uh, data that uh, represents the LV in systolic and diastolic volume, and then we derive the ejection fraction. We do the same in the CMR by having this like method of disks, but we call it a short axis semi stack from the four chamber and two chamber semis. And then it's important to look at the left ventricle outflow tract, aortic valve, and it it's important to plan it properly, otherwise you will miss important diagnosis and anatomy. So um, basically from the very basal slide in the short axis stack, which is on the top uh, left, we will have a plan, a plane bisecting the mitral and the aorta. We will call this a mushroom shaped structure. Um, a plan bisecting this in the and also bisecting the ventricular long axis through the mitral into the apex, you will have a nice sagittal left ventricular outflow tract, which is equivalent to the three chamber view in the echo, where you can see the mitral valve, aortic valve, ascending aorta, sub aortic area. So if you are in planning uh, imaging for HCM patient, you need to have this view to look at the SAM and the left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. And then there's another view. We will do a coronal imaging of left ventricular outflow tract to look at a subaortic plane um, clearly. So once we got the sagittal LVOT, we will have our plane of imaging uh, going from the middle of the aortic wall into the infralateral wall. And then we will acquire the coronal left ventricular outflow tract, as you can see in the second left right image. And this is important also to look at the aortic root and ascending aorta. And if there's a um, prominent aortic root or you suspect a dilated aortic root, you will do a further planning for aortic um, the root and aortic valve series. And then if the question is the structure and function of the aortic valve, you need to have a more, a more slices uh, cutting through the aortic valve and the aortic root. So we will have, we will do a cross-sectional cutting planes in the sagittal left ventricle outflow tract and the coronal left ventricle outflow tract. We do it from three to five slices, cutting from the subaortic level uh, up to the sinotubular junction. And in the bottom right image, you will see this images cutting through the aortic valve. It's important if the question is it a tricuspid or bicuspid or unicuspid valve. Uh, does it open well for planimetry analysis and calculation of the aortic valve area? So this is um, the important views that we need to understand for LBOT and aortic valve. And if you suspect an aortic root ascending aorta dilatation or coarctation, you need to plan further images for a proper assessment of the aorta, because if you rely on the transaxial stack, you will miss the diagnosis because there is an inter slice gaps. And so what we're doing is we localize, as you see the stars, the arch in the transaxial, the ascending and descending aorta. And from these three points, we will plan an IO, a nice aortic arch images, um, as you can see on the right image. So you can see clearly the arch, the ascending aorta, if you're suspecting a coarctation, also the great vessels, bovine arch, or any vascular abnormality. And then we are uh, doing a dedicated right ventricular views 
uh, because you need to assess the ventricle properly in some uh, pathologies like arrhythmogenic uh, RV and also in, uh, in patients with congenital heart disease involving um, pulmonary valve tricardial valve like tri trilogic follow or post um, congenital heart disease repair. So from the transaxial stack, uh, we will plan our imaging going through the pulmonary valve and we make sure that it's cutting the pulmonary valve. So we will get what is called a sagittal right ventricular outflow tract. As you can see in the middle top image, um, you can see the pulmonary valve, RVOT, and right ventricle. And this view is important to assess the pulmonary valve uh, opening and also um, degree of visually assess the degree of pulmonary valve regurgitation and looking at the RVOT for any areas of echinesis, dyskinesis, aneurysms, and for um, RV free wall function. And then we are doing what's called a cross section of the RVOT for proper assessment of the RVOT and pulmonary valve. So we will plan the next image from the sagittal RVOT cutting through the pulmonary valve. So we will have this nice image for the pulmonary valve and for proper assessment of the structure and function of the pulmonary valve, which is the cross sectional or coronal RVOT. And further, we need to assess the RV, um, regional wall motion abnormality and RV contractility in general. So we need to have more images uh, showing us the RV free wall, the inferior wall. So this, and also to assess the RV inflow and outflow, the tricuspid valve, RV contractility, and uh, RV OT and pulmonary valve, like in the echo in a single image. How we do this, we will do it with the three dot method from the horizontal long axis, which is equivalent to the four chamber and the RBOT that we had. And the, this three parts going through the tricuspid valve, RV uh, apex, and the RVOT. And then we will have this bottom right, right image nicely showing the right atrium tricuspid valve, RV, RVOT, and the pulmonary valve. And these views are important for assessment of the pulmonary valve, tricuspid valve, and RV regional wall motion abnormalities. So, this um, very basic lecture dedicated for understanding how we plan imaging of the LV, RV, aortic, and pulmonary valve, and how um, this important in getting um, a question that an uh, anatomical question answered. And as I mentioned before, it's important to be aware of the anatomy and clinical question to plan your images. Otherwise, you will miss it uh, because it's not a whole uh, set of data acquisition and then you do post-processing like in CT, you need to be present in the scanner, guiding the radiographers, uh, which further images that you need, especially in patients with congenital heart disease, if you're looking for ASD, VSD, or uh, assessment of the function of the pulmonary valve. Um, I hope it were, was a simplified one, um, and it's my pleasure to be part of this uh, brilliant workshop, and thank you so much. اعتقد ان الصوره بتاعه الاناتومي والامجز دي تكمله للمحاضره اللي فاتت وتاكيد للقصه ان انت ان انت هاو تو اكزامن ديفرنت بارتس اوف ذا هارت باي ديفرنت بلينز فان انت ممكن يبقى عندك صوره ترانسفيرس تحولها ازاي للترانزيشن لونج اكسس تحولها لشورت اكسس ومن شورت اكسس تحولها الى الى فيرتيكال لونج اكسس وتستدي ديفرنت ستراكشر اوف ذا هارت عايز اخد صوره ارسم الارش عايز ارسم الاوت فلو تراك عامل مثلا عند بعمل له ستادي بري تافي بروسيجر عايز ارسم كويس قوي الانف الاوت فلو بتاع الليفت فينتريكل واشوف الانيولاس واشوف الساين تيوبلر جانكشن واشوف الاورتيك فالف وكده ازاي انا اقطع الحته دي كويس قوي من من الصور دي فده الفاليو بتاع المحاضره دي ان انا هاو تو اكزامن ديفرنت سيجمنتس اوف ذا هارت طبعا المحاضره دي هتبقى ريكوردد وهتلاقيها على اليوتيوب وممكن ترجع لها تاني تو بي ريفايزد ان انت الكلام ده وممكن انت حضرتك هتقرا وممكن ترجع للمحاضره تساعدك لو في اي كوشن ممكن الدكتور محمود الدكتوره ساره الدكتور هناء اي حد ممكن يجاوب يعني لو لو حد له اي كوشن في الكرير لما رايس ايزي ايوه هون 
دكتوره هنا يعني عشان بس البلان اللي احنا بنخططه ده بيجيب يعني زي ال 90 درجه بتاعه يعني لونجيتيدال اكسس هنقطع بلان كده هيجي لنا الشورت اكسس يعني الفور تشامبر لو قطعنا كده هيجي لنا شورت اكسس عشان تبقوا فاهمين يعني الشورت اكسس مش هيجي لنا لوحده لازم احنا نديسايد البلان بتاعنا ونخطط مظبوط طبعا عشان ما يبقاش اوبليك القياسات تبقى مش مش اكوريت وده طبعا كل ده لازم يتم واحنا في, في السكان يعني ما ينفعش بعد ما المريض يقوم لا احنا نسينا ناخد الشورت اكسس كل الحاجات دي لازم تتاخد اون سكان لا هي يعني نصيحه بس لاي حد ناوي يشتغل كارديك ام ار اي انا عارف ان البلاننج ده هي شغله الاوبريتور بس لا يعني اي حد ناوي يشتغل فمهم جدا جدا في الفيرست كيسز بتاعته لازم ياتند السكان وهو يعمل بلاننج بنفسه الحاله كامله فروم اي تو زد اوكي ده هيفرق كتير جدا جدا انك تفهم الفيوز تفهم الديفرنت وولز بتاعت ال في جت ازاي بالبلاننج بتاعنا التظبيط بتاع الايمج تظبيط ال جي اي ده مهم جدا زي ما دكتور شريف اتشرف وقال ان ال ال جي اي واحنا لازم في سيكونس او فيزكس معينه احنا بنظبطها على ال على الجهاز ال من غيرها مش تطلع صوره اوكي فاحنا لازم نوصل للنالنج بايت مثلا بتاعه المايوكارديم عشان نقدر نشوف السكور لو احنا ما ظبطناش الفيزكس دي كويس فممكن نمس السكور اوكي فهي مش مجرد زرار هندوسه هيطلع لنا الصوره لا احنا لازم نظبط الفيزكس بيهايند ات عشان نقدر اكريتلي ديتكت السكور وهكذا فالبلاننج والتخطيط وانك تشتغل حاله بنفسك ده مهم جدا جدا ما حدش يستهين بيه هو طبعا يعني دكتور عصفور ودكتوره بسمه ادونا شرح كويس قوي للتخطيط فكره بس احنا مش كل الناس هنعمل لهم كل التخطيط ده يعني هو ده مش 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 هو اللي احنا بنعمله لان ده معناه ان احنا هنقعد كتير قوي في المشين وان احنا مش هنقوم عشان عيان واحد فده طبعا مش براكتيكال احنا بس نبقى عارفين في حاجات بيسك هنعملها ومع الكويستشن لو انا عارفه الهيستوري بتاع العيان بتاعي مثلا حاجات في الاكو معينه كويستشن معين الدكتور بعته لي ببقى مايندد ان انا مثلا محتاجه حاجه اديشنال للموضوع ده او شفت حاجه ما كنتش عامله حسابي عليها قبل كده من الحاجات اللي قبل كده لما انا بصيت على الورق فاحتجت حاجات زياده فاحنا بنبقى عارفين لو عايزه حاجه زياده اقدر اعمل ايه وان الام ار اي بيديني فيوز واسعه جدا تقدر تديني انسايتس كتيره في الـ في الـ في السؤال بتاعي يعني بس فلو احتجت ان انا محتاجه حاجات وفي حاجات اساسيه لازم اعرفها 100% يعني بس شكرا اني كويشن نموف على التوبكس اللي بعده التوبكس اللي بعده اعتقد ان احنا اتكلمنا عن البيزكس بقى بتاع الام ار اي اتكلمنا 